Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Graybeard Garage. My name is Matt, and today we're going to look at my DR, which you guys may have already seen uh, the previous uh, video we did with my brother's DR, which is slightly different than mine, but it's pretty much the same model year. Um, mine has not been started in about two years uh, since we got our RK tractor. We don't really have any use for this, so I'm going to drag this thing out, get it test it out, make sure it runs, everything, and then I think I'm going to sell it, um, as I don't have a lot of use for it anymore. So, let's go ahead and get the tarp off of here, check that thing out, see if we can get it fired up. Alright, so let's see if we can get this thing tore out. Woohoo! Wasp! Wasp alert! That's not good. Oh, that's... That's not good either. Tarp's all tearing up. Not good. Hmm. Well... Okay, so let's see if we can get this thing dragged out of here. We're in neutral. Oh, that thing's heavy. Where's those wasp nests at? All right, well, we'll keep dragging it. All right. So now we got her out. Fortunately, it's been covered. We got a flat here. I'm gonna air that up and go get the battery, and we'll get that installed. And then we'll see if we can get this thing to fire up. And then I got to find this wasp nest. Oh, there it is, right there. Uh huh. All right, let me take you off the tripod here. There it is. Nice wasp nest. There we go, and it's gone. I don't see anything else under there. All right, so we just changed the oil in April, so I don't think that's going to be a problem, but we'll check it anyway. We got gas in it, I'm pretty sure. We get the battery, we'll hook the battery up, and then we'll see how this thing does. All right, got. All right, so now we're back, and you can see we have a green wire and a red wire. The green is our ground, the red is obviously our hot or positive side. So we're going to go ahead and um, slide our battery in, and we'll get this all hooked up. I think this one should just slide right in from this side. There we go. We'll do our ground first. All right, now we have our ground on. Let's go apply our hot side. And that's not really tight. Those are only hand tight from when we were using it on my brothers. Well, that thing corroded and gross. I'm gonna go get my file and we'll clean this off real quick. All right, slight change, not getting a file. Let's use our wire wheel and clean this thing up real quick. Perfect. So we have our our hot 
nice and clean. We'll go and get that. Go ahead and get that hooked up as well. All right. So I probably should have shown you how these batteries work. But just like a regular, like a riding lawnmower battery or an ATV battery. They basically put like this little plate inside, like an insert that's threaded. And then you run your screw into it. And that's kind of how that works. All right, so that's hooked up. Um, now mine, key doesn't... I don't have a key for it. I use a screwdriver. My operator presence control doesn't work either. So, whereas my brother did replace those on his, I don't really care about those, to be quite honest. Okay, so this is not connected. No big deal. I mean, you know, whatever. Maybe I'll replace it. Maybe I won't. And then the switch works, but it's not, um, there's no key for it. So let me go get a f regular screwdriver and we'll get that done. All right, so before we go crazy cranking on this thing, let's just make sure there's oil in it still. And there is plenty, plenty of oil. And so the way you check the oil on these is you clean your dipstick off, right? And then you just put it here. You don't screw it back on. You just stick it back in. And that gives you your reading. Let's see if we get that to focus. Yep, so you can see we're good. All right, so we've got plenty of oil, and it looks nice and clean. And then we're going to take a look in our, our fuel here. Ooh, bone dry. Interesting. Okay, actually, why'd I close that? So I'm going to get some fuel in here. All right. I don't think I'm going to fill it, but we'll get enough in here to where... At least it'll start. I hope. That's probably more than enough. More than enough. All right, so we get our fuel lid back on. Everything else looks all right. So now we'll go back around this side here. I'm going to set this up so you guys can see what I'm doing. Oops, I accidentally turned that off. So let's set this up so you guys can see what we're doing here with getting this thing started. So you always want to make sure you're in neutral. So we are in neutral. All right. And this is our wheel clutch here. This is our brake. And the blade is disengaged. It's engaged here, disengaged here. This is our choke on all the way. And we need to open our fuel line, our fuel valve. So that's under the tank, which is probably going to be near impossible to, to show you that. If I can get to it. Let's see. I don't even remember where it is. Shoot. Maybe it's back here. There it is. So actually, I can show you that. Let me pull this off. I'm going to take you back here. So you can see the little red lever on that valve. We'll just push it down. 
and that should open up the valve and you'll see we've get got some fuel here let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing to fire up all right so we got you back on the tripod got our little screwdriver got her set the full choke So that's not bad, guys. Sitting for two years. So this is an idle. We're in idle right now. And then it's just full run. All right. So we're going to take this over to the shed. We'll take this over to the shed and then we'll uh, put some air, air in there and take some pictures of her. So that's pretty cool. Been sitting for two years and the thing fires up on what, three starts? Can't beat that. That thing's a beast. So what I may end up doing is keeping it for a little bit. Maybe we'll do a series, like take it apart and put it back together to show you guys how to actually work on these things. So let's make our way over to the shed, which quite frankly is absolute disaster area so we have our uh, tire nicely aired up and now we are going to move it back over here and then we'll talk about this thing for just a couple minutes before we get it covered back up um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get this bad boy moved. Let's get this taken off real quick. And we'll take the air out of our tank. All right. Our tank will let out its air pressure. So what we'll do now is fire this bad boy up again. And we'll go ahead and get her moved back over here into the yard. And then we can do a little, just a little, um, I don't know, overview, for lack of a better term. Okay. Spin around. And we'll bring her back over to the center of the yard.
Man, oh man. All right. Let's go ahead and shut her off. Actually, what I like to do here is shut off the fuel and let it burn out the gas from the car. All right, well, I tried to run it down out of gas, but I think the valve might, uh, might have a different set of plans than I do. Because it still seems to be letting the gas run pretty free. Um, so... I went ahead and just shut it down. No big deal. Uh, we're going to put it back in its hole here in just a minute, but I wanted to take a few minutes here and show you guys kind of, you know, some of the little things about this thing, especially how mine is different than what my brother's was, which is what we had showcased on here before, which was our burned out uh, DR. So the first obvious difference between mine and my brother's is going to be under here. And you can see there's no differential lock uh, for my drive. So that is the one huge difference between my mower and his. Now, his mower, this is your differential lock here. And you use that and it locks in your wheels. And the diff lock, what that does is it makes both wheels turn at the same time, right? Mine. It's a one-wheel wonder. It only spins one wheel ever, and that's it. So, which, I mean, really here in Florida, it doesn't really matter because we don't really do a whole lot of hilly-type uh, work. All right, so, sorry, I had a minor interruption there. Apparently, we are currently in the flight path for Tampa International. We got planes overhead. We got the racetrack road out front, and we got this bad boy out here making all kinds of noise. So just a couple quick things here. We did talk about the locking diff, which mine does not have a locking diff. Like I said, in Florida, we don't have a lot of hilly terrain, so there's not a lot of necessarily need for it. Um, we'll go ahead and get that crap there knocked off. Uh, another thing to point out, it's got the 17 horsepower Kawasaki FH500B right here. This thing's a bad boy. This thing runs and runs and runs and runs and runs. Man, it runs strong. Some of the things I've replaced on here, obviously I did an oil change. Um, I replaced the chain behind here. And in addition to that, I also changed out the transmission. So your transmission's right here. Um, that was actually broken. Not the transmission itself, but there's a drive sprocket that's behind here. And, um, and that's what runs the wheel, turns this wheel here, turns this wheel here. So I'm going to do a whole, I think, series of videos on this thing before I get rid of it. And we'll talk about all the little nuances and I'll show you how to take the wheels off and how to do, you know, get behind there and look at your, your sprockets, um, how to change the belts, the drive belt, the blade belt. I'll show you how to take it take this on and off um so yeah we'll go over all that another thing i replaced on here um in addition to the chain the sprocket and the transmission was the starter and that's got a brand new starter on it and i think that's kind of my fault with the old one because i was using a car battery to start it which i think was the cranking amps are way too high for that thing. I'm pretty sure I burned that bad boy up. But I replaced that, put a new uh, inline filter on there. Same old tank, same valve in the tank. And, um, oh, I replaced the brake. It's got a disc brake in here. I replaced that as well. And I think that's as far as it goes for replacing stuff. All right, guys. Well... That pretty much is like going to conclude our little overview here of our uh, DR mower. And uh, back in the day, this this was like their top of the line unit. Um, it has done wonders for us. 
for our property. We cleared two and a half acres with this thing. Um, you know, and by clear, I mean, you know, a bunch of undergrowth, you know, saplings that were up to about three to four inches. This thing mowed them down to the ground. Um, so a pretty stout little machine for sure, for certain. Uh, like I said, maybe we'll go ahead and do a little bit of a series on this thing and we'll, we'll show you how to, you know, take the deck off and take, go behind the plates here and look at the gears and we'll look at that kind of stuff. We'll talk about those things. So guys, I think that's going to do it for this video. So listen, if this is the kind of stuff that you guys like to see, you want to see us kind of work on this thing a little bit. There's really not nothing to fix per se. Um, other than maybe a new switch and like a, you know, a new um, operator presence control. Um, and actually not even the control. I think maybe if just plug this thing back in. It might just work. I don't know. Um, so maybe we'll try that too. But otherwise, guys, if this is the kind of stuff you want to see, please hit that like button. Comment, let us know what you think. And um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. It does help the channel out. And if you have subscribed, thanks so much. We do appreciate it. Um, we'll see you guys here next time on Graybeard Garage. My name is Matt. And remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. See you next time.